on, and I'll be back here very, very shortly. So, have fun. Okay, so you do want the light on or off? On, yeah. Okay, great. All right. Welcome, everybody. Um, I am part of the booster group and have a slew of uh, extra other boosters here, so I want to have everybody wave their hands. So if you have questions throughout the season, we'd welcome you coming to any of us. I'm Kirsten Wallace. Michelle Bourne is sitting at the table there. I have a senior. Michelle is talking, so I'll tell. She has a junior. Suzanne Johnson also has a senior. I'll say your name and you can tell who your kiddo is. Liz Draper. Awesome. Ken Barrage. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is the dedication we get. So he had a graduated senior last year. Christy Myers. Welcome. Kim Penrose. I have a sophomore. Awesome. And Holly Swanson. I have a sophomore. Awesome. So we're really glad that you guys can make it here. We know it's really early in the season, but figure <coughs> it's always been done. So we're continuing to try to get you as much info as we can early. In your handouts, when you walked in, there's a really great schedule of the whole year. Knowing what to expect when is really helpful. Hopefully you'll appreciate that. And We'll put all this stuff online, too. We have a website that we'll point out here in a slide or two so that you can reference back everything, including the recording of tonight's presentation and the slideshow. So I know there was a lot as you walked in. We'll go over a lot right now. Nate will go over even more. And don't worry about having to remember all of it. But we did want to just get the group together, start the process of getting to know each other and what to expect. Um, so, at this first portion, we're just going to let you know what the booster group does. We're part of um, a large group of boosters that benefits from the foundation, which um, if you see Coach Jeff here, is a legacy uh, connection group of all the boosters. It's ensuring that we're spending money appropriately and building on each other's success and that sort of thing, so good stuff. But our booster group focuses on trying to be the mediator between the players, the coach, the team, and trying to make it fun for everybody and that everybody knows what's going on when. So a few of the things that we coordinate include, what we'll go over later, is the sunrise scrimmage. That's the kickoff for the season. It's an all-day event that's on your calendar, March early. Um, the kids come to school and as, you know, first they go to the field house over um, in Kipling and that Schaefer complex. They do a morning sunrise scrimmage. They come back here, get uniforms, have breakfast, do more team building. It's just kind of the way to get everybody together. We'll um, be coordinating that and communicating about it, probably asking if anybody wants to help. It's a nice way to get to see your players. I don't know if yours are like mine, who's a senior and barely see him anymore. He drives himself, but it's a nice way to get connected to the team and the players and um, a great way to meet other parents too. So I know many of us just travel in our circles and I think we'd really like to build more community. And so again, another reason for tonight. So sunrise scrimmage that day is usually sometimes when we do team pictures, but um, we'll be coordinating that. So if you want a picture of your kid, they usually don't smile, but it's a nice memento. Uh, we'll get those done. Senior night is another event that we'll be coordinating, so asking maybe for volunteers there, but want to honor each level as they progress. So we'll be having a game that will be assigned for senior night, and we'll let you know when that is. Um, team dinners are another piece that have been a tradition. I know some of us might be familiar with football dinners are before every game. We typically assign two or three games a year where um, we ask for volunteers to help either host or bring food or both and it's a nice way again for the kids to get together in advance of a game and get fed up on some good food and then again build that community that we're working on. And a season banquet is the other kind of major event. So if you're interested in helping work that, we'll have a sign up where you can say, hey, I'd like to be part of this and and none of this is something you need to commit to tonight, but just wanted to give you some of the idea of what we work on through the year. Boosters also coordinate making sure the kids are fed, so we have some snacks for the bus rides that, when there's long ones, 
We've been lucky enough, I'm sure Nate will talk about this, to be able to coordinate and pay for buses to far away games. I know there are a lot of sports and a lot of schools there these days that are struggling to get kids to games and thankfully we've been lucky. We'll have to see what comes up here, but um, we haven't had to drive them early and you know during work hours getting them to games, but we'll be talking more about that as it gets closer. And then some of these far away games, we make sure they've got pizza like they do tonight. So make sure they're fed after they've performed and keep the energy up. We um, try to do fundraisers as well. There are team fees associated as there are with most sports, but um, try to offset some of those costs by facilitating Qdoba night or whatever else night. And we'll be communicating to you about those. In fact, we've got a slide that kind of lines out a plan already for some of those. And, um, but that is something that we try to make happen so that we don't have to ask for more money from all the parents who give a lot. This is the website that um, if we do one thing tonight, we would love for people not only to sign in on these hard copy forms, but that website, and I have a QR code that will come up here later too, is where you can register your kiddo for our team online. When you do that, if you've already been on the team site, then it'll just ask you to re-verify a sign this season, and you will then begin to receive as Nate send out weekly emails, make sure you get those coming in your inbox. Many of us already probably have been getting emails from him and he's manually managing like a private email and an old list and we wanna just get to a point where it's all facilitated through a single app and that'll be this one. Squad Locker, we got a link here, but this is another just highlight of what boosters do is we um, have an apparel site that Ken has done for us for years um, nice that therein you can get gear and stuff throughout the year. A little portion of that goes to our team. So um, when you purchase something, whereas some stores are open for like a week or two, um, this one is available all the time. So you can go in there and you can say, I want this sweatshirt with that logo and you get to pick it and it ships out to you. Um, it's kind of independent of Green Mountain, but it does benefit our team specifically. So I have a a um, blanket I got done on there, and it's nice to, I've got a like chair thing, but uh, we'll additionally, later closer to the season, Nate will facilitate getting another store up and running that um, is that limited time frame thing. We'll talk to you more about that, but that's his show, so we'll let him talk to that. And then I think the other just last call here is, you know, if you're interested in participating, we certainly welcome membership in Boosters, and um, so ask any of us about what goes into it, and if you are interested in joining or attending, uh, we try to publish when meetings are and afterwards what happened, and that's all going to be available on that same website, so we'll show you that. All right. All right, Michelle. There she is. Hi, I'm Michelle Borden. I do um, sponsorship and fundraising for the Booster Club and um, basically two different separate functions. Um, I'm always out looking for sponsors, anybody who wants to um, donate money to our team, we will advertise their, um, all of their business stuff on our Facebook page and on our social media pages. And um, we probably have like five or six sponsors every year, which is really nice. So um, if you would like to sponsor or if you think your employer would want to sponsor, it's really great to have a lot of the local businesses um, you know, helping us out. Mm -hmm. So um, feel free to contact me. My email address is here. If you think you know somebody who wants to sponsor, I can get a letter out to them or to you for you to give to them. Um, the other main thing I do is fundraising. So we'll have stuff going out throughout the year. There's a couple things happening now. Um, one really easy thing that you can do is to connect your team super card to the Greenmount High School Boys Lacrosse uh, booster club and can go on the Team Super website, website and do that really easily and then they send us a check quarterly and we get like two or three hundred dollars a quarter and there's not that many of us that are participating and that's a great way for you to be able to you know give back to the program without really having to pay anything. Um, the next thing that we're working on, flashback to youth sports, is Bonner Braves. Um, last year was the first time we've done it and um, we ended up raising eight hundred dollars. 
So um, we have the sheets over here, they're available now. We'll get more information out to you guys in the weekly email, um, but we'll sell them for a couple weeks. They'll be back um, and available for you guys before Thanksgiving break. Um, so if you'd like to participate in that, all the sign up sheets and everything are sitting right over there. Um, and then just throughout the year, we're gonna do a couple of different things. Um, the Saturday before our regular season starts, we're gonna do Mam's Night, and that's a really fun night for the boys. Um, we'll all go and to the game, and $10 from each ticket we sell will come back to us. And then what's really fun is after the game, the Mammoth game, we get to scrimmage ourselves on the field. So the boys just think that's really fun. So that will be the Saturday before, the last Saturday in February. Um, and one other thing, uh, the Play Against Sports fundraiser, I'm planning that for January, so if you have any sporting goods equipment, just keep hoarding it until then. It's an incredible fundraiser. Um, you can go and give them a bike and they say, well, we'll give you $50 for this. You can decide if you want to give that money back to the program. Maybe you say you want to give $25 to the boys across. They double the money, so, and they take anything, golf equipment, ski equipment, all sorts of sporting equipment. They'll come to your house and pick up, um, you know, any kind of large items that you can't transport yourself. So just keep that in mind if you're trying to clean stuff out, um, that that's coming up. Um, and yeah, we'll just do some other like restaurant nights and stuff as well. So that's pretty much it. Um, do you have a clicker? Um, Errol is working for me while well. Okay. Do you have a date on that play? I don't. That'll probably be middle of January. He wants to get through the holidays and then they'll be gearing up to get a lot more equipment back in. Um, here is a couple other things. We have some social media pages. Uh, the Facebook page primarily is more for the parents, so we'll put updates and stuff on there. The boys love the Instagram. Um, Phil DeGrazia takes the most amazing photographs. Woo, Phil! <laughs> Woo! We're going to be playing football. They know how awesome it is. <laughs> and so we are always posting on, on um, the Instagram page. The boys love to share things to their stories, mm -hmm. and so it's really fun for them. So there's a couple QR codes for that. All the QR codes we're showing you tonight are also up here, and then there's a couple sheets over here if you want to scan any of them. Awesome. Is there anything? Thank you. Um, and then I mentioned there's the site you can go to when you get cell service again. I know we're in this concrete block that makes it difficult, but um, if you do have service, I turn off the Wi-Fi, it sometimes works. You can scan any of these QR codes and get connected to volunteer, to complete the contact info, but again, you've got these sheets, so if you didn't fill it in on the way in, Nate can uh, help us make sure we get that uh, filled in on the way out, but um, just hope everybody has a chance to register your kiddo on the Green Mountain League Apps website. That'll help facilitate our communications and get you to the page you wanna be on to be able to find everything you need. So if there's any other questions, shoot them my way, any of our way. Glad you're here. Have a good night. Have a great night. All righty. Whoop. Cool. So, where am I going? All right, so I'm Coach Nate. Nice to see everybody. How are you doing? Am I good? It's hot. It's a million degrees in here, but we will suffer our way through. So, um, so uh, this thing should run relatively quickly. I guess I put myself in a weird spot where I can't be anywhere. Um, cool. So, if you did not get signed up on these sheets, please do that. Um, that would be a great thing for us. Can everybody hear me okay back there? We're good? Cool. So, uh, let's talk about... Um, this thing kind of comes in chunks. We're going to talk through what the year is. We're going to kind of answer some random questions people tend to have. Um, kids are going to start coming through the door. New players and freshmen only. Everybody else is going to leave or go find something to do. Um, and then we'll talk about kind of what does our actual spring season, all that stuff look like. Okay? Our season, um, this is the only time we get together between now and the banquet. Everybody good on that? Um, so this is kind of the one opportunity to get information. Hopefully we've got most folks here. Um, nice to see new people. I see we've got some new, new names and faces down there, so that's good. Uh, so, 2023, which is nuts. And so, um, so let's talk about the calendar. The black part of the year is the non-Chassa mandatory section of the year, okay? The yellow part of that calendar is the part where we are a Chassa sanctioned sport. That goes February 27th to May 6th this year, okay? So everything we do in the black is what we're, it's kind of the part of the year that we're in now. When we get to the springtime, that is a, a man, you know, it's all mandatory. You know, technically it's always optional, right? But playing's optional too. 
Um, and so the yellow part is where we take attendance, where we belong to the school, where we have to follow all school rules. The black part is sort of we operate as a club program, okay? Um, so our year, you're gonna hear us reference things like the off season, and that's what we're just finishing. So basically the off season ended on Saturday. Um, that is all summer long. It's our fall workouts in that outdoor, you know, Denver Lacrosse Club League, okay? So that just ended. Um, it gets confusing because there are two fall leagues, right? We just ended DLC Fall League, which is outdoors down in the Tech Center. We're about to start Fall um, Foothills Indoor Fall League, um, hopefully. And so we'll talk a little bit more about that here in a minute. Um, so we're moving into the preseason, hence the preseason meeting. Um, that's where we begin practicing indoors. So we're going to practice outdoors this Friday. It'll be the last time we'll be outdoors because it gets dark. Um, and weather gets unpredictable. And so we will be at the Foothills Fieldhouse, um, and then we'll play in a league on, at the Foothills Sports Arena. Um, so indoor practices, we play in the Foothills Indoor Fall League, just our young guys here for November, December. Um, and then we play Foothills Indoor Winter League, which happens for January and February, okay? So that's all pre-season, still non-mandatory, but it is um, stuff that we do. Okay, spring season, again, that's when we become Chassa sanctioned. That is the 27th of February through May 6th. And then our playoffs continue state championship game May 22nd this year. Okay, so August and October, DLC Fall League in the Tech Center. We sprint on Monday, so we go to the weight room. We practice on Friday, so we have some amount of organization. Um, you're going to see these Y slides. I've been, you know, I've been doing this for long enough. Today, exactly, and I think parents also appreciate understanding why, right? Why is the question. I think we need to be able to answer those. Um, why we do that stuff yeah, It's keep sticks in hands, right? help our seniors begin to develop leadership skills um, and kind of meet their upper, uh, their underclass and upperclass and kind of work together, okay? Um, and we move into preseason where we are now, and so we kind of up-level a little bit. So we're sprinting weight room on Mondays, indoor practices at the field house, and, um, and, and FSA, so Wednesdays and Fridays, uh, November, December, we will be all in the field house, okay? Once we get over to January, February, we'll be called uh, FSA on Friday. And so FSA is a full-size lacrosse field. The other one is a box lacrosse size field. Um, we will do wall ball on Thursday morning. That's new for our group. I think it's important for this group. We're maybe kind of in a space where we need to work on that. So that's going to be in the oxygen here. If you don't go to school at Green Mountain or if you don't have first period, I understand those things. We're also tracking wall ball reps um, through an app that guys can attach their arms. So plenty of opportunity to work there. Um, and then we play Saturday league games. Okay, why are we doing that? It's about individual skills, right? So if we roll back to that um, calendar thing, um, this is the part that's about the team, truly, right? And then this is the part that's about individual development. We need better players to have better teams, okay? Um, so, uh, individual team, or individual skills, basic team concepts is our goal in what we're doing there, okay? Um, and again, it's about getting our guys around each other. Right? It's going to be a pretty interesting study. So I get that we look like we keep people busy for a lot of the year, and we kind of do, right? I mean, so we're four and a half hours worth of stuff when we play a game. That's the easy part to get people to. Um, we're collecting average daily screen time next door. That's one of the things that's happening right now. And so I'm hearing four or five hours as numbers, right? So I'm going to be able to tell you what the average is for our team. I want to steal some of that time to put it into this time. We're all good on that? So I think if kids are averaging kind of in that realm of 28 hours of time on their phone, they probably have four hours to give to maybe doing something athletic in person with their friends. We're all good on that? So it'll be an interesting deal. I'll share it with you. I think it's probably interesting for everybody. Where's your kids stacked up, right? So um, preseason's happening, okay? Preseason league. So here's where it gets interesting. We had a tiny amount of teams commit to the league. So we had three teams for varsity and four teams for JV. Um, these are run by Foothills Parks and Rec. Um, what I want to know from guys that are going to play, so it's only really open to our non-seniors and really an emphasis towards our newer players, and our hope was to play JV, right? We wanted to be able to play um, with our younger guys, kind of equal type of competition. And um, now it's, it's, they're going to smush this together. So there's going to be kind of three varsity guy teams. It's going to look a lot like the DLC League did, right? And so we lost some game early, games early, and we were more competitive as we went. Um, is anybody concerned about like, hey, if it can't just be JV, do we not want to do it? Because I don't want to have people bail out on it, or I, want, I don't want it to not be a good experience. I'd honestly rather not do it if people are concerned about it being like what DLC was, if people feel like they're into it. I guess kind of anybody concerned? Anybody concerned about their kid playing against older kids again and feel like that's still good competition? 
Awesome. We'll be in the league now. Okay? Um, those games start in a couple Saturdays. Everybody good? Um, and so those are, you know, I push pretty hard to get early morning. We've been doing the league for a dozen years now, and so we tend to get what we want there. Um, we'll push for that, and then you guys, everybody can have the rest of the week and have a good time. Okay? Um, so we get through the preseason, and now we're off to February. And February is still part of the preseason, but it's an important month. So this is, if, if you never, if you don't listen to me on anything else, just pay attention to this one, because this one makes the, the team or the, the folks in the office mad. Okay? There is stuff due to the school, not to us. Are you good on that? So there is a spring sports registration that is not due to us. So they collect $175, the activity fee, and they need all your stuff. We also collect money from you, so that's due to us. So there is school stuff up top, there's booster stuff down below. If you've done one and not the other, it's a problem for everybody, okay? So school items, you need, the registration is gonna open on January 30th, it's gonna close for our team on the 16th. It doesn't actually close on that date, and I get that that's early, but here's what happens, or here's what happens. Every single spring, we are by number, by athlete count, the biggest sport, um, season, right? So we have track, and we've got lacrosse, boys and girls, and we've got baseball, and we've got golf, and we've got tennis, and we've got soccer for girls, right? There's a lot of stuff going on. If you are not registered with school, I can no longer let you play, okay? And we try out the first three days of the year, okay? So what happens is everybody pushes, the, pushes this off and pushes it off, and then you show up, everybody on Kimberly Kuntz's doorstep, wanting to know why you can't like do it right now, but it's only 2.45 and practice is at three, just do it for me. But there's a line of 90 people asking that question of her, right? And so it's open for a full month before that day. Let's just be those people. For folks taking pictures, just a heads up, I am gonna email this to all of you. So you guys will have this electronically too. Um, and so really, really important that we try to be good citizens in the school sort of atmosphere that we do a good job on that one. Um, our team fee is how we pay for stuff. The backstory there is that we get $700 a year to operate our program. It costs significantly more than that to buy like a goal, right? Um, and so we, we don't spend that much money on balls, but pretty close, right, in a year. And so we do collect money because we own our uniforms, we own our nets, we own balls. We have to pay for some busing um, because of the busing situation here. So um, that's that stuff. So February, think about paperwork and we'll be sending a lot of stuff. Think about that some of it's due to us, some of it's due to the school for you to be good to go. Okay, once we get into March, we're into that yellow part of the calendar, um, and we'll practice at the high school. JV will start at four, generally. Uh, varsity will start at five or six, depending on how we're splitting with um, girls. And, um, and then sunrise scrimmage, so important day to circle. Do not be busy the first Saturday of our season. Okay, so that's the day that our kids spend all together. Um, and uh, they'll be busy from 6 a.m. That's not a typo, and we hope that they're all there, dressed, ready to go at 6 a.m. So make friends with an upperclassman if your kid doesn't drive, so you don't have to wake up, and we can get everybody going. We're good on that? So it is lacrosse, 6 to 7.30. We come back here and have breakfast, um, and then we do team stuff, and then we do more team stuff, and then we eat lunch, and then we go somewhere, try to do something fun. It's kind of a day for our group to get together. We're all good? Um, spring break. So I get that school is off. We are off for a lot of it, but not all of it, okay? And so we try, we've, I've been putting this in the bottom of emails for two months already. Um, just understand that we are here mandatory practicing the 23rd and the 24th. If you aren't here, you won't play following that. Um, and so we want people on board with what we're doing, right? Um, it's a 10 week season. We can't give away an entire week. Uh, it, 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 one of those deals, we have a lot of people as soon as, I mean, people leave before the break starts and don't come back till like 10 minutes before the bell rings on Monday. And I think it's important for our guys, if nothing else, they can all hang out here and all be together again and maybe take a little bit of a breather and put us in a good spot. So we will be around the, th the Thursday and Friday of spring break. Please also know we have games on the Thursday and the Friday. So we play back to back the Thursday, Friday before spring break as well. Okay, and we did that because we aren't allowed to play games until nine practice or nine weekdays into the season. And so we pushed the game way late in the week one, and then we pushed two games way, way, in week, way late in week two. Um, and then I think that's good for us. It gives us more practice time. Okay? We get into spring break. You know, why are we doing that? I kind of already gave it to you. First half of the break's off. I think getting away is important. I think that that's good for everybody. We're not going to give away that entire stretch out of 70 days. 
Um, and then it lets our guys be together. I think it encourages them all to do stuff together, which is a good thing. Okay, April, pretty normal month. I am aware of prom, okay? We haven't practiced for on the date of prom in 12 years. So we probably won't do it again. There has been some conversation about maybe doing, we used to do a boys girls game at the end of the season. Challenge now is both our programs win a lot and so we're in playoffs and so it's harder to do that, okay? Um, so we might play boys versus girls in the morning of prom just to get everybody out of bed, but we'll see. Um, then playoffs is May, so we get to the month of May um, and we go um, practice basically ends the first Friday of May for our JV guys. The season will be over whenever that last game might be right now. It looks like it'll be a Wednesday. Um, and then we'll have our end of season banquet the Sunday after the regular season's over, which is before playoffs, which is intentional. We'll sort of celebrate our regular season. Um, that will be Valdoria on the water, so over behind Old Chicago's Sunday uh, the 7th at 5.30. Um, and then we'll go, so exit interviews. That's how we kind of give and receive off-season feedback. So we give feedback to our players. They give us feedback about uh, what they thought went well, what could have been better, all those things. I think it's important that for all we shout at them, they can shout back at us, and that's good. Um, and then uniform return will happen on that day. So if you're a JV guy, you're wrapped by Sunday, the day after this. So whatever, May, May 7th, you're donezo when the sun goes down, okay? Um, and so you know you got a heart out there. The end of the school year, I get, gets real busy, right? There's graduation things that happen, finals things and all that stuff. So hopefully people can understand kind of what's going on. Um, and then June, July, um, it's when we do summer stuff or when they do summer stuff. So get out and be coached by somebody else, kind of get on the club team, play with other people. Right, um, play other sports, do other things. All good? So, some random FAQ things, people always ask me. So, um, wow, that's a lot of stuff. Should, what about, I want my kid to play other stuff. And we say, yes, and I actually mean it, right? Um, and so I get that coaches go, yeah, you should play other sports, but you should always be at our stuff. And so my argument against doing our own stuff is, we're four and a half hours a week, and it's one sport all year long. And I'll be honest with you, I don't want to do much lacrosse stuff in June, July, most of August, because I do a lot of it the rest of the year. And so I can empathize with our kids if they want to go do something else. That makes a lot of sense to me, right? Especially as a young person. So um, I think get out and do something different. That's really good for your athletic development, right? It's also a lot more hours a week, right? So football is going more than four and a half hours a week right now. Is that true? They nearly touch four hours a day, right? And so, so that's... So they're developing in a different way than if they just did four and a half hours a week. So that is a good thing. I think cross country is a great sport. I think tennis teaches lateral mobility. I think basketball is basically the same game, minus a person and on wood instead of grass, and indoors instead of out. Um, there's a lot of good reasons why you should play sports. I grew up playing hockey. I think that's the greatest sport on the planet. Um, so do other stuff and we actually need it. We're all good? Um, avoid burnout. Um, better athletes all around, and I think learning to compete is a really important thing. I think there's a, there's a discount in some people who say, well, I'm really good at this one, so I'm just going to do this one. Well, what if you were second string, or maybe you rode the bench, or other things, you're learning to compete to move yourself into position in a sport, and that's a very, very good experience. We're all good on that? So, multiple sports are an emphatic yes for us. I would love to have more guys playing other stuff. You know, obviously, we're kind of a basketball school in the winter, so that's sort of your option. Um, other, other things can be good. Um, people, if you want to know about the helmets, so by Chassel Rule, we all have to be matte black and black everything. So face mask, chin, kind of the whole bit. It has to be matte black uh, because that's what we wear. Uh, the XRS from Cascade is what the helmet that we use. It retails at 380. We get them for 255 and they'll be here three weeks after we buy them, okay? Um, so payment is due November 11th and I'll be hounding folks to get that done. Um, and that's so that we can get them back to you all kind of sometime in early December, okay? Um, you can certainly go buy them on your own. If you're not, if you have not been, if you're not on the order and you haven't paid, you won't get one, right? So we don't float these for anybody. Um, this is sort of, we do this to be nice and we take a bunch of money off. Um, and so I think that that's a good thing for everybody. If people have questions about that, you can certainly come let me know, okay? Um, what are these places? So we talked about the field house, right? You'll see that written 2F field house, right? Hills field house. Um, same, same building, so this is the one, this is what it looks like. It looks just like that, except our players are taller. Um, <laughs> and that's a four foot net, that one that you stand next to, just for reference. Um, and then, so this is Kipling right here. Okay, and that is Hamden going that way. 
Okay, so on this side of Schaefer, and then the Foothill Sports Arena is down on the bottom. That's the big one. That's the, the huge one down there on the Schaefer Complex. That's where we do our indoor league games on Saturdays. So that's the, the sports arena. They feel backwards named to me, right? The sports arena is actually the huge one and the field house is actually the little one, um, but we get used to it. So um, indoor practices on Fridays, uh, January, February, and that's the primary place we like to be because the weather is unpredictable in Colorado, right? In March, April, May. So um, those are those two locations. The addresses for those places will live at the bottom of my email. Um, we'll be good to go. So, for those sorts of things, does that raise any questions for anybody? Yes, ma'am. Um, what about the other time where you want to ask for the field Yep, so if you have questions, and we're talking about off-season stuff. Yeah. Yep, so if you take a look at those two sheets of paper that you've got, okay? So every single date and time for every single thing that we're going to do for the rest of the year. Um, so we number our stuff on the selfish human, so the first week of the year is the first week of our season, okay? Before that, zero week, and we go minus one, minus two, minus three, all the way up, and we're in minus 17, okay? And so we sprint, and we're in the weight room, 315 to 515 on Mondays. Um, this Wednesday, we didn't do anything because we're not there yet, so let's look at next week. So week minus 16, we are off for Halloween because I'm not a monster, right? So we'll let our kids not have to live and run on that day. Um, and then we'll be in the we will be in the field house uh, 4 30 to 6, okay? Um, and that will continue the same way all the way down. Um, and then on Thursdays, it's 7 30 to 7 50 in the morning. We'll be playing wall ball at the oxygen. And then on Fridays, we'll be in the field house until the new year and then we'll be in the sports arena. That's um, 4 to 5 for both of those days. And then we'll be playing leagues on Saturdays. Does that make sense? And so you can slap that sucker right on the old, um, on the refrigerator, you should be good to go. Okay, so that's a very good question. If you flip that over, it's got the regular season in gray there. Um, it's pretty wide open as far as what happens. It's just that we practice and we play games. We do have our game schedule mostly figured out so we can start to nail down dates for that for people. Um, and so we'll go from there. So that is a good question. That's a different format than we've done. So if you guys have been with me before, um, it's looked sort of the narrative version. So it looked more like this. I felt like that was maybe a little more confusing. You guys can give me feedback and I'll redo it if I need to. Um, so what's on the narrative side of this thing is other stuff besides lacrosse. So in October, what do you need to do, right? Number one is attend our preseason pre player parent meeting. So whoop, check that off, you're all done, right? Number two is register on the team website. Please do that because we're gonna, I'm gonna send one more email on Sunday to the old list. So I'm gonna go, New players on Yahoo email, which is mine, and then I'm going to send everybody else from last year, and then finally last year's seniors are going to be absolved of my emails, um, I'll start sending them to this 2023 list. Oh, that door. Oh, hey. um, so, um, hopefully that helps. And so these are all your things that you need, um, and then we'll talk about the stuff on the back there. Uh, good question. Okay. So let's talk nuts and bolts. So this is where it starts to go pretty quick and we'll get everybody out of here. So um, just because I think it's important to kind of base set this thing, right? Um, what is Colorado high school lacrosse? So we are a chassis sanctioned high school sport like all the other sports you probably think about. There are 72 total teams that play. We're split into 4A, 5A at this point, it's even. So we have 36 on one side and 36 on the other. Um, schools, 15, 21, and fewer are 4A. So we registered at like 1105 is where they put us. So we're about 400 short of the really big schools in 4A. Um, and that's great, okay? So our Foothills Conference, that's the conference that we play in. So we play against those teams for a chance to win our conference or our league. Um, Conifer, Dakota Ridge, Evergreen, Golden, Green Mountain, and Mullen. That makes way more sense than when Air Academy was in our league, when Denver South was in our league, when some of these other schools were in. So there is our conference. Are we good on that? Again, spring season in Colorado, as it's a high school sport, it's February 27th to May 6th, then we play playoffs. Our program is built from the top down, so Josh Scheller runs the show here. Uh, principal I've had great interactions with, he's only been here a couple years, I like him. Autumn Strano, I think, is doing a great job in what's now thankfully becoming a little bit of an easier environment for sports. Um, Kimberly Koontz is the absolute best athletic secretary person I've ever met in my entire life. Okay, she does an incredible, incredible job. And we have to be as nice to her as we can humanly possibly be. Because you will have relatively limited access to these people because they are educators. 
okay? They don't actually show up here for sports, okay? Even the athletic director reviews like a quarter of the teachers in this building, right? She is an educator first. Kimberly is kind of our frontline person, right? So let's be good to her. Let's again, get stuff done early so we don't make her panic, right? All those things. How many folks here know Kimberly? Okay, just as a heads up on November 2nd, so next week, Thursday, she'll leave the building for the rest of the semester. If you wanna wish her well wishes, it's because she's having some stuff done healthcare wise. Um, if you wanna just throw her a note, that would be a very sweet thing for you all to do. Okay, um, and then we can't have a program without, there's no reason to have a program without players. We need coaches to run it. Parents and boosters, you guys are very important, so we'll talk about everybody there. Okay, um, we have a mission statement, because I'm a nerd, and so, we create a fun, competitive environment for the lear learning of lacrosse and character skills, okay? Um, why is it important to have one of those? So it, maybe it lends some light to why I'm here and what we're doing, okay? Um, I think really good people can be really good teammates and they can be really good athletes and those people can be really good lacrosse players, okay? If you're kind of a jerk, you probably don't have a chance to do the other things. Does that make sense? Okay, and I'd say that you don't have to be a great athlete to be a great teammate. Okay? Um, and so we value the left side and it goes in descending order. I know that might be weird for a lacrosse guy to say, but it's true. Okay? Um, what is our goal? We want to be perfect in our process every single day. Okay? So I used to do things like I wanted to make it to a final four and I wanted to win a state championship and I wanted to do, and I realized that if we have really good players, we're going to win a lot of games. If we don't, we'll probably lose some games, but we can do these things really well and have a really good time doing it. Does that make sense? Because at the end of the day, fellas, if your goal is to get rich playing lacrosse, you have chosen the wrong sport, okay? I mean, this is a terrible investment, right? I mean, we are an awful, awful investment um, as sports go, okay? Um, so let's be here to be better people, right? I think that's a good thing. So process-wise, our kids are learning this. It's getting beat into their brain next door. Um, being on time, right? Um, trying as hard as you possibly can. Owning what you do and moving on. Coaching and being coached, and those start at the top and work their way down, right? Um, we can control all of that, so our goal is to control that and do that well every single time we're together, every day. Good? Um, our values, so our values, you know, I'm lucky to have people in my life that are in the coaching realm and I get to steal stuff from them. Um, I have a cousin who's a hockey coach, and his thing was that they wanted to define their values as how people would define um, or say things about them, right? So you, it's the stuff you do so well that people say it about you, right? It's not that you say, we're hard working people, right? It's that you play somebody or you're around someone and people go, man, those guys work hard, right? Or, hey, those guys, man, they were, they were great teammates. They just seem like they like being around each other, right? And so if you're asking me, I'm gonna say stuff like what's listed, we're gonna ask and, and kind of push on our guys to say, what do they value? What do they think is important? Um, about our team. What do we want the public or the people around us, our opponents, officials, other parents, people at stadiums, bus drivers, right? What do people, what do we want people to say about our program? We want to value some things so well that we can get people to say it back to us, right? People seem to be interested somewhat in where I'm from, just because, just because, right? Um, so this is New York State, if it's a little funky to you. The city thing is down here, Canada's up there, I live right there, okay? So Lower Canada is what I get called. Um, I went to St. Lawrence Central High School. I graduated with 65 kids. It was a centralized school with three towns. Um, I then moved way deep south to Ithaca, New York, which is right there, um, at the bottom of that finger lake. Um, I've been here for 12 years, right? So it's not a fluke, I don't think, at this point, why I keep staying. I live less than a mile down the hill. I work at the hospital a mile past that one. Um, and I love doing this, I really do. And I'm really, really excited about this year. And I think we have a phenomenal group. I like kind of where we're spread out in our age ranges. We're a pretty young group this year, uh, but very, very excited about what it is that we're doing, okay? Uh, I enjoy doing this a lot, right? There's nothing I spend more time doing um, besides being at my actual job, and it's really close, right? It's a tight race there. Um, and I think it's a great learning experience, right? Like if you take 50, whatever it's gonna end up being, 55, 60 young people and their parents and deal with a school, right? Um, and then try to have a job with it, you're gonna learn some stuff along the way and I think that that's an important thing for me. Um, so that's just a little bit on me. I've, I've been doing this for enough times that I've said that over and over for 12 years. Is, do people have other questions? Is there anything, I mean, it sounds funny, but like, is there anything you just wanna know? 
like wide open airspace. Is there anything, anything you know about me that I should say? Are you married? Am I married? <laughs> yeah, thanks for putting me on video on that one. So, uh, <laughs> yes, I have a beautiful wife. Her name's Kristen. She used to teach at Lakewood. She's currently um, on sabbatical. So she was an English teacher. She did Honors 9, um, AP 12. Um, she's taken a year off, and so she is now a curriculum uh, educator for a, for a company that does curriculum stuff. So she's working from home, hanging out with our dog, Charlie, who's kind of 2.0 lacrosse dog. I had Murph for 13 years, and he's no longer with us. So we've got Charlie now, and I've got Kristen. Um, and yeah, great question. I like that. <laughs> Anybody else? Anything else random you want to know about me? Cool. So non-negotiable responsibility. It gets repetitive because I think that kind of lends itself to how important this stuff is to us. Okay? So my responsibilities to this program are to start and end on time. Standard, right? Okay? I will have a plan for practices, games, and the direction of our pro program, right? Lends itself to the standard. Okay? I will do some things right and many things wrong. Own what you do and move on, right? I will try to be an example on how to, to own those things and move on, okay? Um, I will coach to teach, right? And so I'm, a, I'm a, actually a relatively emotional, passionate human being. I'm pretty flat. I think I come across relatively flat. Um, I think your kids might say a little bit different sometimes. Um, <laughs> and so coaching to teach, I think, is an important part of all this stuff. And seeking feedback and learning opportunities. So we're set up pretty well for guys to give and receive feedback. We think that that's important. We meet with all of our coaches. Our players meet with all of our coaches by the end of the year. Um, not many surprises. And then the key thing in all of this is that the program is my child here. Okay, it's a 12-year-old kid to me at this point. And so um, it is an impossibility for me to treat your individual kid well all the time. Right? It's impossible for me to prioritize every single one of the 60 kids here. Because as soon as I play somebody, I'm not playing somebody else. Does that make sense? As soon as I say this person is a starter, someone's not a starter. We have 60 people that think they want to play, right? 10 guys start on varsity and 10 guys start on JV, and there are 40 guys without a starting job, right? And so please understand that when you get mad at me, because you will, right? There will be people, probably people sitting here that have been mad at me or they're still mad at me or whatever. But it's fine, right? Big kid. So the program comes first to me, so that is the thing that I protect. And when you get mad at me, it's because I did that and it didn't work out in your case, right? Somebody else is happy with me and somebody's upset with me and we don't do it maliciously. I really don't, right? I wish we could play six teams with 10 guys on them a piece. Everybody played, right? But it's not, it's not what happens, right? And it's not really the way the world works either, so I think it is a good learning experience. So the program is, is my kid, right? That's the thing that I can root for. Um, and kids are part of that. We have to develop kids to have a good program, okay? My expectations are our standards. Do that, right? Kids are allowed to make mistakes, full attention, full effort, okay? And that's really hard to do. That's a ridiculous standard, right? So if you're paying attention all the time, great. That's really hard to do. And I'm actually seeing player eyeballs, which last year I got to get on guys because they're already on the phone. So that's pretty good, right? And then full effort. It's unbelievable how hard it is to do something as well as you possibly can, right? And we push guys to do that all the time, okay? Um, we use stuff like be where your feet are, which for us that is once you put cleats on, you don't need a phone in your hand, right? Because you're wearing lacrosse shoes. So you're doing lacrosse things, right? As soon as you take your shoes off, you can have your phone back. I don't care, right? And so be where your feet are is think a simple way. Like, hey, if you're wearing school shoes, do school, right? If you're playing basketball, wear basketball shoes, do basketball stuff, right? Um, the someday one day starts today, right? And so kids will all the time, well, I'm going to do blah, 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 blah. Right? And that drives me nuts. Just do something. Be great at whatever, you, whatever you're doing, wherever you are, right? And so if that means you're a ninth grader, or you're a 10th grader, or you're a JV guy, or you're a second string guy, or you're a starter, or whatever, do your job really well. It's amazing how, and this happens to adults too, right? So at the hospital, I lead a clinic, and I, so I work with adults as well. It's amazing how everybody can do everyone else's job better than they're doing it, and they don't worry too much about their own, right? <laughs> And so we hammer on dudes about do your freaking job well. Does that make sense? And so they're going to hear that from us. Okay? And then not for school, but for life to learn. I, I love that one. Okay? So that, that's, that's my new one. I added that one this year. Okay? And so it really doesn't matter. Lacrosse doesn't matter. Right? But showing up on time matters. We agree to that? Like you want an employable young person at the end of this thing? If they don't show up late, they're probably not highly employable. 
right? Um, if you want something that doesn't work hard, right? Like, not important for a fraud, but really, who cares, right? But for the rest of our life, that's the important part, right? Probably not going to have any millionaires come out of this lacrosse program for lacrosse, but I hope we create some for the rest of the world. We're all good? So, um, and we kind of jump. So off of those things. Return to play. So if you whack your head or if you have COVID, and just a caveat, this is highly in flex, the COVID thing. So right now, you have to do a five-day return to play. They are looking at it because we're like the only people doing it. But for right now, what the rule is, if you, if you get a concussion, anything we think is a concussion, you have to go get cleared by a physician or an independent practitioner, and then you start a five-day return to play with our athletic trainer. You don't do anything. You walk, you jog, you, you practice, you play, right? Um, that has to happen in order for you to play in the spring. So if you have a concussion, that, that happens. Okay? Same thing with COVID. If you end up positive with COVID, these things are all run by the nurse and by the athletic trainer. Um, you have to do this five-day return to play thing. I will tell you that it sounds like that probably won't exist in the spring. But if somebody got COVID today and you're going to play basketball, for right now it exists. We're all good? Okay? Don't give people a hard time. If you don't agree with it, that's fine. You don't have to play, right? But that is what it is, right? And so that I, know, I do know that they're working on it, and we'll kind of go from there. Catherine Ortiz, her office is right through that yellow bulletin board right there. Okay, so around the corner, that's where she's at. Um, she gets here about 2, 2.30. Um, she's available to all of our athletes and all of our students anytime they need them. And so, you know, my day job is to be a physical therapist. I take care of people all day. When I come here, that hat comes off. I'm done with that, right? And so if you have something, if you're, hey, coach, I can't be at practice because of an ankle, my back hurts, my whatever, I'm gonna, the first thing I'm gonna say is, did you talk to Catherine? Did you talk to Catherine? Go see Catherine, right? Rehab things, I actually believe rehab works. That's why I do it for a living. Um, and so get to her and she'll help you out, okay? Um, we have an academic policy. It's been no Fs for so long by our players account that I just wrote it because that's where it'll end up anyway. Um, and so it used to be, Jeffco technically allows one F, so you have to have less than two Fs, which I think is a tough standard um, to, to get up behind, right? But so we are a no F program. So if you have Fs, you cannot play. Um, and then you are still, as parents, I highly encourage that you push that bar higher if that's appropriate for your kid, right? Not everybody here is going to Harvard, so it doesn't have to be all A's or you don't get to play, right? But um, we, we do encourage you guys, if you want to make that harder, just let me know what it is so I'm not surprised. And if you can let me know as soon as it's a problem, right? It is tough when we're like about to, we're trotting a kid on the field. He goes, no, 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 bring him back. He can't play. So early communication of that's good. Um, grades will get reported on Wednesday or Thursday-ish, depending on how the week goes for the people here. Um, I will let anyone know that has an F. They have until Friday to get that number up. Um, and then it has to be signed confirmation by teacher and AD. It's not just, oh, no, 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 coach, I got it handled. Don't worry, it's good. Right? That, that is not it. Right? So it is teacher to, and athletic director, principal, someone in the office has to sign off, yes, this is good. I'll get an email and I say, cool, you're ready to roll. We're good? And so when you become ineligible on Wednesday or Thursday, you're still eligible until Saturday night for that week. Your ineligibility <coughs> would start the following week if you can't get it up. Okay, and we'll have plenty of communication about that. Hopefully that makes sense. New thing this year. And so this is just because I think at some point we got to push people. And so the squeeze. So the squeeze is another one of those stolen coaching things. And so basically the idea that we, we take people, right, in our program, we want to squeeze people, right? And when you squeeze something, things either shoot upward, right, or they feel like they're getting strangled and they fall downward. That makes sense? And so we're going to squeeze people a little bit. If you have an F on the first day of our season, you, you are not part of our program. We good on that? Okay. So you don't start until all your Fs are gone, and then you can join. But we do try out the first three days of the year. Okay. And so you're not going to be a varsity guy that rolls in on the third, fourth, fifth day of, of what we do. We good on that? And so we did also collect student ID numbers. That's so I can pull grades starting tomorrow. So I'm going to know what people's grades are. We're going to push and push and push and help guys get there. Okay? Team selection starts on the first three days of the year. Um, generally speaking, ninth and 10th graders, we kind of think, hey, why shouldn't this person be on JV? 11th and 12th, why shouldn't they be on varsity? We move people up and down however it makes sense, right? And so if we, think, if we pull you up, it's because we think you can play and we think you're a talented player, right? If we move you down, it's because we think it's the best place for you to have a good experience. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, people with grades and standards will start moving people out. I, I've struggled with the whole, do we cut kids, do we not cut kids? We've never have. 
um, and I don't want to. I think if you can't get your grades right, if you can't live by those four things we care about, then maybe we're just not the spot for you and you should do something else for your spring. I think it's a better place for you to be anyway. Okay? Um, why do we do it that way? Why do we select teams? Why do we do the stuff we're doing? Um, just trust us, right? I've asked for that trust. And I think trusting people is important. Um, and then here's the line. This is the one that gets people going. So if you, if you struggle trusting us, then just tell me what team you want your kid to be on. And then I will tell you if they will or won't play. And you can make a decision about if you want to be involved. We good? Okay, so I'm not going to have that fight with anybody. But no one tells me who goes on the field, right? Even Coach Jeff tries, and I drag kids back off the field, right? So um, I control that one. It's like literally the only thing I control, right? And your kid has a lot of say about how that goes based on all the work you do athletically with your stick, right? Um, how you pay attention, how you understand your role on the team, where you can fit and make sense. So there's plenty of opportunity for guys to play. Um, you can do a lot in that, but at the end of the day, that's mine. So um, let's talk about practice. It is the most important thing you do in the spring besides go to school. I mean that dead serious because I do everything about my life is lacrosse, March, April, May, right? So I go to work very early. I go back to work after we're done. I, it's, it's all I do. And so for 10 weeks, that's what our kids are doing, okay? And so for that, like football families, have I bugged your kids to do anything lacrosse related? The answer is no during football season, right? Um, basketball folks, I'll stay away from all our basketball guys for all the basketball season. We never ask them to do anything. And as a result of that, I do ask kids not to do other stuff for those 10 weeks in the spring, right? Be on this team, be a great teammate, do a good job, okay? Um, as far as communication goes, remind, text, and email is how we'll do that. Everybody should be on the remind now. Text and email will come through the website. Um, why is that important? Because that's really when we become a team, right? Great teammates are at practice. They're not at games, right? Great teammates are at practice. Hey, Sunrise scrimmage, we talked about. I think it's important to focus on that because we want everybody there. Um, there's our game schedule, so this will be in the slide. We had a picture for our kids. I'll bring that over if anybody wants to take pictures, just like people are interested. Um, fun news about all of this. Every team on our schedule made playoffs last year. That includes five teams that made 5A playoffs. Um, every single team from our league made it to the second round of playoffs last year. So we play in the most competitive top to bottom league in our conference. In 4A, um, we've got some good teams on there. We've got teams we'll beat. We've got teams that will be really hard. We've got teams in the middle. Should be fun. Okay. Um, dress code. So practice. We wear black, gold, white, gray. We're nothing undershirt-wise. Um, a GM penny, not your club penny, not your other you know, penny you got for Christmas. Um, same colors for practice shorts. Same colors for socks. If you don't have stuff that's the right color, don't wear it. Um, the only exception to that is if you have a pair of cleats that aren't the right color, that's fine because those are really expensive. I'm not going to make anybody go buy stuff, um, get mad at me. Um, shirt tied, dress pants, dress shoes, to school, to the location of the game, unless that game, the, the game location doesn't have a place to change, right? We don't need naked high school kids. That causes problems, okay? Um, and then your shooter shirt underneath your uniform, we are in white for our home games and we are in black for our away games. Hey, it's not shooter shirt, that is uniform color, right? We have one shooter shirt. Um, we do that because we care about what we're doing, we want it to look like that. We good? Uh, buses are pretty fluid, right? Um, we don't take any buses to varsity stuff that's at NAC or at Trailblazer. Those are the places where we play at home. Um, and we take no buses to JV because it's right there, right? So we play all our JV games on turf. Uh, we will bus it to and away, to and from everything that's away other than that, right? Especially for our JV guys. The only exception might be a Saturday morning because um, I realize it's hard to run kids around and there's a lot going on there. Um, and so we will bus people. Why do we do it that way? Varsity, I don't think it makes any sense to pay a bus driver at Jeffco to drive us to Trailblazer and back. It wastes money that, frankly, the, the district does not have and we don't have bus drivers anyway. Um, so we'll free those up. JV, we want to make sure everybody can get to and from stuff. That's why we do bus them around. Um, and then return trips. So nobody rides home elsewise. If we have a bus around, you drive the bus to the game, you ride the bus home from the game. Um, that's where our guys can spend time together. Um, it's amazing how quiet it is and how loud it gets by the time it's done, and then they all fall asleep, right? Um, and so I think that's important for guys to be together in that. Um, a last thing that, we, that I want to make sure we talk about, Senior Leadership Project. Um, and so this is something we've done since I've been here, and the only exception was COVID a couple years ago. It's where our seniors, our players, uh, decide something they want to do to better the world, right? And then they decide when they want to do it and how they want to do it, and they organize the thing top to bottom. 
And so it gives them some sense or idea of what it's like to lead a giant group of people that has nothing to do with sports. Okay? We've been to the Action Center, we've been to Family Tree, um, we've been to Ronald McDonald House Char Charities um, over at whichever hospital is downtown. Um, and we've done um, equipment drives, like sporting equipment stuff. Um, we've done, I think, canned good drives, all those things. So it'll be up to our seniors. Um, if we have somebody that wants to sort of lend their house to our seniors to be able to get together and talk about that, this is a senior done thing. It is not about parents doing more stuff, okay? This should be absolutely no energy for our parents. Um, even the kids will organize getting people to and from these things um, to make that happen. So I think it's a good opportunity for our kids to, to be in leadership positions and practice that. Okay, team dinners, if you want to help, that'd be great. Open your doors, smelly kids after practice. They will eat and then go. Um, I think it's, again, important for guys to be together outside of competitive environments. Um, again, JV's done at the end of their season. Varsity's done at the end of their season. The day after our last game, we do exit interviews. We do uniform return. Um, before all of that, we'll do a banquet on the 7th. Um, that's good. Okay, let's talk roles real quick. We're going to beat 830 by a bunch. So players, their job is to prepare and perform, period. Okay? Get better, do a great job, right? Okay? We talk to our guys about you are not your best thing you've ever done, right? You are your average, right? And so um, prepare and do a great job, okay? Coaches, we, are, we, have to te we have to teach, right? We can't just yell at people. <laughs> we have to actually teach them something and then hold them to that standard. So we have to teach and demand. Parents, we're looking for your love and support, period, right? So love your kid. Okay, we talked about how my kid is the program, so I'm going to love my kid as much as I can. Okay? Your job is to love your child right, and support our program. Okay? And that's a really, really, really hard thing to do. Okay? Because I just told you I'm probably going to place somebody else in front of your kid. Right? And so you then need to turn around and you need to root for that kid who's playing in front of your kid like it's the only thing on earth you care about. And that's really hard to do. You have a hard job. Like, that is difficult, right? But we expect that and we need that out of you guys because the best teams we've ever had have actually loved and supported each other, right? And the infighting thing just can't exist for us to be as good as we need and want to be. So you guys are very, very important. If you think your kid's not listening, you're wrong, right? They do listen to you. They sound like you. They vote like you. They believe the stuff you believe, right? You are very, very important to them. We want you to love and support. And what we mean by that is cheer for our team. Again, hard to do. Don't use verbs. Don't tell our guys what to do. Okay? They have a lot of voices in their brain all the time. right? So whilst we have a five-foot-tall kid running around being chased and whacked with a six-foot stick, we have like eight people yelling at them what to do. right? They need some brain space. Let them do their thing. So non-verb things are like, nice, great job, excellent, woohoo. Right? It's not run, shoot. Pass! No! Right? Like those things that don't need to happen. Right? And so don't tell them what to do. Just cheer for them and, and be enthusiastic for them about the process. Okay? Um, post game, you know, if I had a piece of advice, this one came from Greg Dale, who sadly has very bad cancer. He's probably not going to be around the time. He's the, the sports psychologist at Duke. Right? And so he came to Jeffco probably five or six years ago. Um, and he talked to all the athletic administration, all the coaches over at Colorado Christian, and he said, you know, he has, a, he has kids, and, and what he tries to do, you know, as much as he wants to kind of talk to his kids about sports, he just says to them, I love watching you compete with your friends. And I think that's a beautiful statement, right? So as much as you could, and I steal that all the time, so our football guys, hey, I love watching you guys out there competing. Hey, I love you, oh, man, it's great to watch you guys compete, right? I think that that's a beautiful thing to remind our kids that they're doing something, frankly, that we can't do, right? I don't know how many people in this room could actually make our varsity lacrosse roster, right? I mean, I'm probably, just because I'm left-handed, right, I might have a chance, right? But these kids outrun me all the time, right? A lot of them are way more athletic than I am, and that's great. We want them to be better than us, right? But I think there's a space, right, and you guys now have a great opportunity to just be their dad or their mom, right? And just tell them, man, it's awesome to see you out there running around, right? Because these this four years for some of you guys has become three, two, one, and it's almost over with. And you might not get a chance, right? The vast majority of kids don't play in college, right? And most of them aren't going to play college in Lakewood where you can see them all the time, right? 
And so they're playing a sport right near your house with all their friends and having a great time doing it. And I think we need to kind of, we got to love watching them do that. Right? Um, we want to model character skills. This is sad to me, right? Um, especially towards officials and our opponents. This thing, if you guys want to watch that, it's 2 minutes, 20 seconds. I'm not going to make you sit through it because it's hot. But um, NFHS, so the National Federation of High School Athletics, has come out with a thing where they've said, all right, in 2022, we're done with parents screaming at officials, assaulting officials, throwing things at officials. It has to stop. Enough is enough. That is what you'll listen to if you watch that, right? So officials are leaving officiating in droves, right? And backstory, um, my father was a girls basketball official for 20 years. So I actually don't think they're the most horrible people on the planet, right? And I believe that they are high school level officials and they are doing their best, right? And I also know that I'm a high school lacrosse coach, right? I'm not any better than that, I promise, right? And I also know our athletes are high school level athletes. So we're all trying to get better and none of us are perfect, including our officials. And so what happens is if we're jerks to people, when somebody gets assigned to a Green Mountain game, what do they do? They drop the game and they don't show up. We paid officials for three or four games for JV last year. We had two officials instead of three at the majority of our games last year. Um, we couldn't play Conifer. Uh, Coach Travis, so Jeff's son, officiated a game at Conifer, right? Because no one would come officiate. And I'm not saying that that was our fault. That's just a, I mean, it is a problem in the state of Colorado in all sports. Right? They're canceling sports because we just can't be nice enough to these folks. Right? And so I would love if officials came to Green Mountain stuff and said, man, those people were nice. Right? Like they gave me a Gatorade instead of yelling at me or throwing a rock at me or whatever the nonsense happens. Right? Um, and so I think that's a really important place where we can model being decent character people. Right? Um, I think it's good to appreciate the fact that our players own physical property that accounts to just about nothing. Right? They own almost nothing in their life at this stage of the game, right? But they do own their lacrosse ability. They own what they do academically. They own all of those things. And so I think it would be great if we believed and then taught them, hey, if you don't like how much you're playing, get on the wall, go work, ask coach what you need to do better, right? Work on that, right? Um, and then character things like, hey, you know, this person's mean to me. That, those, that person doesn't like me. Well, how do we work around that and kind of continue to develop and be better people? Right? Um, and then to the extent you can participate, provide for what we do, right? So if you can give money, if that's the easiest way, give us some money, it helps. If you can help us in our off-season stuff, if you can do fundraising things, I know Michelle Bourne would take all the help she could possibly get. Um, if you can do booster club stuff, that would be great. Kind of be involved, because the more you buy into this thing, I promise the more you'll believe in it, okay? Um, and it'll be more fun, your kid will have a better experience, right? Um, if you think we're not doing a good enough job, just come help us, and then it'll be better, right? Um, so, tonight, are you registered on the website? That needs to happen like by, by Sunday, Monday. Like, let's get that thing done, right? Just do it tonight if you can. Um, are you signed up for the Indoor Fall League? So I need to know who everybody is. I'm not gonna let that roster balloon to be huge. We're gonna probably shave it down if we need to. Um, I wanna make sure we get really good touches out of our younger guys um, on that one. Do you need to be part of the helmet order? You can put it on this sheet. We'll get it on the other sheet. We'll get everybody going. Um, and then payment by the 11th or you won't be on it. And then last thing, what question do you all have for me? So that's kind of the end. That's gonna be my contact info. I do not send anything, or I will not ever receive anything that doesn't get sent to that email. And I know that I send you guys stuff through the website. That is not my email, it's a website. You're all in there and it just throws things to the universe. So that um, email, that phone number, if you wanna text me tonight, just say, hey, I'm Joe Smith, I'm Bobby Smith's mom, dad, whatever. Um, that would be great just so I have your information. Um, that email, if you want to send me a note, just so you got it, um, that would be great, okay? Um, I'll leave that up there. And so what questions do people have for me? Oh, schedule's on the board right here if you want pictures of it. Um, the second page of these two things is everywhere we do stuff up until the season starts, and then everything we do is at the school. Um, the front page gives you all of your important month-by-month -month stuff. So. When October happens, knock out October, November, December, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, okay? And then the back side, just fun fact, reminder things, is sort of a condensed version of the PowerPoint um, about our academic policies, senior leaderships, uniforms, game details, other stuff, okay? Um, fee breakdown is on the bottom of that. Yes, sir? Is there anything we need to do to start getting notifications from you on the Remind app? So Remind is for the players, not the parents. 
Okay, so that is a student deal, right? So that's an opportunity. So I don't ever, I've never sent a reminder in my life, okay? Um, so that is not us. That is for our kids to be able to move things around with one another. Because our seniors, you know, we're again, we're trying to teach these guys how to lead. It's a clunky process to start with, right? Like if you were in that room, it took a little bit to get it going, right? And so they'll get better at it, but remind is 100% for players. They all had an opportunity to get that figured out. And so it works like text message is all that it really is. And so that's a, that's a student-based thing. It's part of letting go. It's, it's really hard to do, but sometimes you gotta let it go. Yep. They gotta get their own game right. Hey, so. yep. Hey, and, and so to that point, right, one of the great things I heard um, kind of through the summer was, I am at service to the 30-year-old version of your kid, right? And so I've been, I've been a 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 year old boy, right? None of them have been 38, right? And so I know that I don't think, when I was 30, I don't think some of the stuff I thought was cool at 15 was really that cool at 30, right? And so I'm serving the 30 year old version of them and that 30 year old is relying on us to kick their butt sometimes, right? And to make them communicate and oh, I forgot about, it. well, he wasn't there so he doesn't play, like not the end of the world, right? But part of the learning process of this whole thing so it is, uh, so much of this, like, this is the only time I'm going to meet with you guys till the banquet, right? I'm going to see your kids a lot, right? And so we're going to pump everything we can through them. So, we're all good? Can you put that um, schedule up there? Yeah. Thanks. Yep. Um, Any other questions for me? Is that, uh, this pads, is going to get emailed. Yep. Pads, anything Yep, so I mean, it would be an ideal world if stuff was black, gold, white, or gray, or some variation of those things. I, I would not go out and spend a boatload of money to get stuff that's not, instead of being dark blue, it's black, right? Like, that's pointless. But um, helmet, right? Mouth guard. Buy your kid an extra $5 mouth guard, because I do not have them, right? I'm not going to carry a mouth guard around, right? If they don't have a mouth guard, they don't play. We've been through that forever. So um, mouth guard, so helmet, mouth guard. Gloves, elbow pads, shoulder pads have to fit Noxie certification. So if you're new and looking for kind of used cheap stuff, it's gotta be within the last couple years because they kind of have a big Iron Man triangle chest. Um, by rule, and this makes the moms happy, you have to wear a cup. It is now by rule. It used to be optional, you have to wear a cup so your kids will have grandbabies and that's great, okay? Um, and so you have to wear a cup. Um, Rib pads, rib pads are um, optional. I wore them my whole life. I think it's smart to wear them, okay? So, and then cleats, our cleats are like football cleats, right? They can be like soccer cleats. They cannot be baseball cleats. There's no metal allowed in our cleats. They do make lacrosse ones. Anything else? All right, I'd love to say hello to you. Oh. Yeah, I mean, and this is it, right? You don't have to sit in another meeting the rest of the year. You're going to get one email a week, one extra if we have, absolutely have to. It'll be one email a week. We're going to play games, have fun. I'd love to say hello to you guys. If you want to stop, I'll be up here. Coach Jeff is our associate head coach, so he's our second in command. If anybody doesn't know him, Jeff Larkin, he does a lot of stuff for the school. Um, if you guys want to come say hi, that'd be great. Otherwise, have a great night. Hey, thank you. I'm Finn's dad. Finn's dad.